A couple of weeks ago, Fujifilm announced the new X100F. And a friend of mine asked, would this be the perfect desert island camera? Well, there's only one way to find out. I borrowed a pre-production uh, X100F from Fujifilm and I have a desert island. Well, it's not actually a desert island. We are in Gran Canaria and we are having a couple of days of holidays here. So we'll see what we can do with this new camera. I like to travel light uh, and on this trip it's hand luggage only. So I really like this small package of the X100F. Uh, the whole X100 series has been very, very compact. Uh, this one is just a bit bigger uh, and that's because of the bigger battery. This is the same battery as X-T2, X-Pro2 and all the interchangeable lens cameras. And uh, to me, the added thickness of the body is uh, almost nothing. Uh, but the good thing is that we have a lot more battery life. Uh, for travelers, what's also very handy is that we have a USB uh, port uh, that you can use to charge the camera. So with this bigger battery, I can get a lot more shots. Usually for a day of shooting, I don't have to change batteries. So that's definitely an improvement. It's still the same very sturdy kind of body, um, which I've liked before. The first time you go on a trip, with just a camera like this with a single built-in fixed lens uh, it can be a bit uh, limiting or can feel limiting but once you start using it you can feel that you can actually do pretty much everything with it if you work around some things and for me it's very liberating not to have too many choices when i'm on a holiday when i'm on a trip i know this is the focal length that i have and that's the one that i'm going to use that said, in JPEG mode, you can use the optical or the electronic zoom feature, which works quite well and I've used it quite a bit on this trip. You can only use it in JPEG, but I don't really see a difference in image quality, whether you have the electronic zoom set at 50mm or 70mm, it all looks pretty well. So there's still the same kind of look to the body, but on the back a lot has changed. All the buttons are now towards the right and we have the autofocus joystick which is a big improvement over the previous d-pad arrangement to change the focus point but it still has that stylish look that we got used to from the x100f landscape photography is not something that i consider myself to be any good at uh, it requires patience, research, uh, you have to be able to wait for the right light. It's about noon now, so the light here is not really great. Um, it requires tripods, filters, cable releases, all that. I don't have that, I don't have the patience, but still it doesn't stop me from trying to take a landscape shot every now and then. The Without filters, tripods and a lot of patience, you can still make uh, good landscape pictures. The one thing that you have to keep in mind is to not shoot what you see, but rather what you feel. Look around you, use all your senses to discover what it is that you're feeling and try to tell that story, try to get that into your picture. Travel photography is about more than just the big vistas and the beautiful beaches. It's about the small things too. So you have to keep in mind to also photograph the details, um, the things that may not be so pretty at your destination. Um, I always photograph with the idea in mind that I'm going to make a book about my trip. I generally don't do that book but it allows me to capture the images that you need to tell the complete story to tell the nuances of the story and I think the X100F is a great tool 
for this kind of storytelling. It's small, so you always have it with you. You can take a picture of your food. You can take pictures of the people you are with. You can take pictures of the people around you without disturbing them with a big camera. I like the fact that you can be very flexible with this camera because um, its automatic functions work really well. But if you want to switch to more um, manual functions, you can easily do that with a spin of a dial or the push of a button. So keep in mind if you're doing any travel photography to look farther than just the big mountains and the wide beaches, I think it's important to tell a more nuanced story and we as photographers are storytellers, so we should try to make uh, a story that has some balance to it. Street photography is something that I like to incorporate into every trip, even if it's just for an hour or two. But street photography is real documentary photography. A lot of the pictures that we take right now may not be as spectacular, but they become a document in time. Uh, if you look at those pictures in 30 or 40 years, they will look completely different and they will have a certain value of how life was at a certain place at a certain time. Tourism on this island is mainly centered around older people and gay couples. Um, I have nothing against any of them, trust me. But it was sometimes a bit hard to walk around unnoticed because A, I am a man under the age of 60 and B, I was walking around with a woman. So um, I was shooting from the hip most of the time and my settings uh, to make this a little bit easier um, are still a bit hit and miss, but if you start with these uh, settings, you can get uh, a lot of good pictures. So first of all, I shoot around f8, f11, depending on how much light I have, and my shutter speed is set at a thousandth of a second, possibly, um, or preferably. Uh, but if I have to, I go down to one five hundredth of a second. But if you're moving around yourself, shooting moving people, then you cannot go much lower than that. Um, and I set my camera to auto ISO to conquer all kinds of lighting changes. You may have to check your exposure compensation a bit if you're shooting into the sun or with the sun in your back. Uh, but usually that kind of stays the same if you go in a, a certain direction for a while. Also, I keep my um, focus on continuous and I have a, a large area set for the autofocus. So um, a, a bigger zone which and I let the camera choose whatever I need to capture. So whenever you're on a holiday, this was not a photography holiday, this was just a holiday for us to rest a bit, uh, to look around a bit. But if you can uh, fit in like one or two hours of street photography, it's always handy to set the scene. It's always fun to do. Um, we are actually right now, we're waiting to board our flight back home, but we have some time to kill. So we came here, just gonna walk around a bit and see if we can make any nice extra pictures. Mm -hmm. 